Hi guys, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel, Adventures in America. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jocelyn and for today's topic, I'm going to discuss the difference between dual citizenship and derivative citizenship. Who can apply, who is required to take the oath taking, and how much it will cost for you to become a dual citizen or to have your derivative citizenship. Now let's talk about dual citizenship. Natural born Filipinos and naturalites in a foreign country can apply for dual citizenship. Now a child born in the US or a foreign country to at least one Filipino parent is a dual citizen by birth. On the first instance, you must have a dual citizenship oath taking. Now a child born in the US or a foreign country to at least one Filipino parent is a dual citizen by birth. You are an American because you were born in the U.S. and also you are a Filipino because your parent is a Filipino. All you have to do is to submit a report of birth at the Philippine consulate abroad. Now let's talk about derivative Filipino citizenship. A child or children born outside the Philippines have derivative Filipino citizenship. But there is a huge difference. If you are unmarried, or children below 18 years of age, whether legitimate, illegitimate, or adopted of former Filipino parents who retained their Philippine citizenship under the law, you may be deemed as Filipino citizen. If you are born of former Filipinos, you can apply for derivative citizenship. Now, for those applying with minor children for derivative dual citizenship, here are the list of documents. Child's birth certificate, child's foreign passport, and child's colored ID photos. Now, here are the main differences. Who can apply for dual citizenship, former Filipino born in Philippines? Also, children can apply. Also, children born abroad of a Filipino parent are dual citizens. For derivative, only children born outside the Philippines of former Filipinos. Now, what is the age limit? For dual, there is no age limit for derivative children below 18 years of age. What is the cost? $50 for dual citizenship, while $25 for derivative. For online appointment, separate appointment for each applicant. While for derivative, minor children applying for derivative do not need an appointment if accompanied by the parent who has an appointment slot for his or herself. Now, for oath-taking... For dual citizenship, it is necessary. However, for derivative minor, children do not need to require to appear in person. Now, if you are a former Filipino, are you obligated to become a dual citizen? The answer is no. It is your choice to become a dual citizen. If you wanted to have the rights and privileges of being a Filipino again, then you must apply for dual citizenship. You must apply at the nearest Philippine consulate covering your residence. Please take note that there is a territorial jurisdiction for all Philippine consulates abroad. The hardest part, especially during the pandemic, is to schedule an appointment for your oath taking. Now, the real challenge is securing an online spot for your dual citizenship oath Taking. It only costs around $50 to apply for dual citizenship. But first of all, let's discuss the main law governing Philippine dual citizenship. It is Republic Act number 9225, which is the Philippine Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Law of 2003. It is actually a privilege accorded only to those in compliance with the law and existing regulations. Now, if you're a former Filipino that does not want to or cannot apply for dual citizenship but want to stay in the Philippines longer than allowed, you can do the following. First, you can apply for a 9A visa. And second, you can also apply for a Balikbayan visa which grants a one-year privilege of stay in the Philippines. And just a word of advice, please check first with your foreign country of birth or naturalization if it allows dual citizenship. 
Now, how does one reacquire Philippine citizenship under RA-9225? Natural born Filipinos who lost their Filipino citizenship through naturalization in a foreign country may reacquire Philippine citizenship by taking the Philippine Oath of Allegiance before a duly authorized Philippine official. The Philippine Oath of Allegiance does not require a person to renounce his allegiance to any other country. Now, who are natural born Filipinos? Those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their Philippine citizenship. These are persons born after January 17, 1973, whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines at the time of their birth, or those born before January 17, 1973, to a Filipino father or mother, and that person elects Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority, which is 18. Now, there is an important question. Is it possible for Filipinos to hold dual citizenship or more than one citizenship at the same time? The answer is yes. Holding more than one citizenship is possible for Filipinos, especially when conflict of nationality laws is concerned. For example, a child born in the USA of Filipino parents is an American citizen under U.S. law and a Filipino citizen under Philippine law. This is because... American citizenship is derived from the territory in which the person was born, while Philippine citizenship is derived from the parent's citizenship. So children born outside of the U.S. of Filipino parents have derivative citizenship and do not need an oath-taking. Now there is another important question. Does one who requires Filipino citizenship need to reside in the Philippines? The answer is no. You don't need to reside in the Philippines. Residency in the Philippines is not required of those who wish to reacquire or have reacquired Filipino citizenship. Those who intend to vote in local elections, however, must establish residence in the locality where they wish to vote. So, if you wanted to vote in a local elections, you must be in the Philippines. Now, let me discuss the benefits of being a dual citizen. Now, let's move on to the rights and privileges on requiring Filipino citizenship. There are a lot of rights and privileges that I will share with you today. First is the right to travel. Filipinos have the right to travel unless you are coming from a red list country, which is equivalent to a travel ban. But generally, Filipinos can travel as long as you have their necessary immigration requirements. During the pandemic, Filipinos have less restrictive travel protocols for quarantine and testing purposes. In addition, you can stay indefinitely in the Philippines because you are a Filipino. Another right is the right to own land and property in the Philippines. Generally, there is a prohibition to own land among foreign nationals. Another right is the right to engage in business or commerce as a Filipino. Another right is the right to practice a profession. Make sure to comply with the requirements of the appropriate body or agency. Another right is the right to vote in Philippine national elections. This is very timely, especially for the upcoming presidential elections. Can one who requires Filipino citizenship vote in the Philippines? Yes, if you have required Filipino citizenship, you may vote in the elections provided that you comply with the residency requirements under existing Philippine election law. However, you can also vote abroad in Philippine national elections such as president, vice president, senators, and sectoral representatives under the Overseas Voting Act of 2003. Now, you can only elect officials in the national elections but not local elections because it will require your residency. So what is the effect of dual citizenship on the payment of income taxes? This is one of the most important questions because a lot of Filipinos are planning to retire in the Philippines. Under RA8424, only income derived from the Philippines are taxed by the Philippine government. In 1976, however, the Philippines and United States signed a treaty on taxation in order to avoid double taxation for Filipinos who derive income from the U.S. and for Americans who derive income from the Philippines. 
However, please consult the IRS regarding taxation. If you are a U.S. citizen or a resident alien, the rules for filing income, estate, and gift tax returns and paying estimated tax are generally the same whether you are in the U.S. or abroad. Your worldwide income is subject to U.S. income tax regardless of where you reside. So please remember this. If you are a U.S. citizen, wherever you are in the world, you must file an income tax return. However, there are income requirements. Now, as a Filipino citizen, can one spouse who is a foreign national live in the Philippines? An immigrant visa may be issued to a Filipino citizen's foreigner spouse which entitles him or her to permanently reside in the Philippines. Said visa may be obtained by applying at Philippine embassies or consulates general. The effectivity of the visa, however, is contingent upon the Filipino citizen's retention of his or her Filipino citizenship. Now, let's talk about the children. What is the citizenship status of one's children after he or she requires Filipino citizenship? Now, here is the answer. If his or her children are unmarried and below 18 years of age, upon reacquisition of Filipino citizenship, his or her children are recognized as Filipino citizens under Philippine laws and are entitled to the rights and privileges attendant thereto. Now, if a Filipino citizen chooses to travel to the Philippines with his or her foreign spouse and children, do the spouse and children need to secure additional travel documents from the Philippine Embassy or Consulate General before leaving? The answer is no. There is what we call a Balikbayan visa. Now, under the Balikbayan law, a Filipino citizen's foreign spouse and children do not need to secure other travel documents and they will be allowed visa-free entry to the Philippines for one year provided they have a round-trip ticket and that they travel with a Filipino spouse or parent. There is no cost to the Balikbayan visa and the family must go to the Filipino lane to avail of this and must tell the immigration officer upon arrival. Let me know your thoughts regarding the rules about dual citizenship. Also, if there are any disadvantages of getting a dual citizenship, Please share in the comments below. Please obtain your dual citizenship documents. Please share in the comments section below. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. And if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. And if you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.